Good morning, fourth grade. Today we are going to be reviewing a bit more about ecosystems and food webs. We're going to be looking at some different examples of food web, some that were even on our test, and breaking down each role. Our first food web, we have an example of a desert food web. Remember, food webs are tools that scientists use that have different arrows pointing from different organisms to show how the energy travels from one organism like this cactus plant to another organism like this kangaroo rat or this rabbit and there are there are many different levels that that shows how energy transfer for example take a look at this food web who is who is consumed or eaten by the rabbit. We follow this food web, we see that the rattlesnake and the hawk can both eat or consume the rabbit. In this food web, we see many different roles that are played in our food web. Let's talk about the different roles in our food web. The first role we have is producers. Producers are those organisms who are able to make their own food. For example, the grass and these two cactus plants are examples of producers because they do not need to eat another organism for their energy. They get their energy from the sun and are able to make food with it. Our next type, our other type of role in a food web are consumers consumers are all those other organisms that need to eat other organisms for energy and there are different types of consumers and we'll talk about that next but if we look at our food web here we see that a grasshopper the kangaroo rat tarantula rattlesnake rabbit lizard and hawk these organisms are all examples of consumers because whether if they're eating a plant or another animal they have to eat something else to get their energy that is what a consumer does a consumer must eat for their energy and then the third role in our food web are decomposers decomposers are those organisms that eat eat dead plants and animals. So decomposers are very important in a food web because once animals are dead or plants have died, they help decomposers help break it down to tiny pieces that can return to the soil. For example, in our desert food web, one of the de a decomposer that we had was this bacteria. We see how all the arrows of all the organisms lead to the bacteria that is because once a rabbit or once the grass or once the grasshopper or whatever organism dies it will eventually eventually be broken up by bacteria so those are the different roles in food webs we have producers consumers and decomposers Let's take a look at this example of a food web, which we also saw on our test. On Edpuzzle, can you tell me who is a producer in this food web? If you said the green grass, which I am circling in the color green, yes, the green grass is an example of a producer. Green grass does not need to eat for its energy. Grass makes its own energy using the en the light from the sun. Now let's identify our other roles in this food web. Our other organisms like our snail who eats a green grass is a consumer. A snail is a consumer because it is eating some other organism for energy. Can you guys write in the in Ed puzzle now what are some examples of consumers that are on this food web thank you for sharing your thinking if you said a grasshopper is a consumer that is correct a grasshopper eats grass so it is a consumer as is the snake the snake who also eats who eats grasshoppers 
is an example of a consumer because it is eating another organism. And then we also have a frog. A frog is an example of a consumer. This frog eats a snail and a, grass, a grasshopper. That means that it is also a consumer, as is the owl. All of these organisms are examples of consumers. These organisms, the snail, frog, owl, snake, and grasshoppers are all consumers because they are eating other organisms for their energy. The snail and the grasshopper are eating grass. Meanwhile, the frog and the snake and the owl are eating other organisms. And we identify the roles that we see in this food web, but we're missing one more. Can you share on Edpuzzle what organism we're missing? If you said decomposers, that is right. On this food web, we don't see a decomposer, but a decomposer still plays an important role because once these animals die, the decomposer will be will be the organism that breaks it down to smaller pieces. So we identify the producers and the consumers. Now let's continue exploring what are our different consumers that are on our food web. So there are three types of consumers. There is an herbivores, which are those consumers that only eat plants, like our snail and our grasshopper are examples of herbivores because they eat grass. And then there's also carnivores. Carnivores are an exam are are consumers who will eat meat or other animals. For example, like the snake, the frog, or the owl. These three organisms are examples of carnivores because they eat other meat or other animals for their energy. And then we also have omnivore. Omnivores are not that much picky eaters. They will eat both plants and animals. Let's look at a food web that was also on our test. Can you guys name? So on our food web, we have our producers, which are the skunk cabbage, the stinging needle, the stick of spruce, grasses, and the red elderberry. These plants are all examples of producers because they make their own food. But we also have some consumers. We have a porcupine, a salmon, red squirrel, a deer mouse, a marten, and a grizzly bear, and a human. These organisms are all examples of consumers. Let's take a close look at these different consumers. Let's take a look at the red squirrel. This red squirrel, for energy, it only eats the stick sicka spruce. Share on Edpuzzle, is the red squirrel a herbivore or a carnivore? You said herbivore. That is correct. This red squirrel is an example of an herbivore because its a diet or the food that it eats, it's only plants. And animals that only eat plants are called herbivores. However, the journey of the red squirrel does not end there. If you look at the red squirrel, it can also it can be eaten by an organism that we know as marten. So these martens get their energy from different food, including salmon, red squirrel, and a deer mouse. Share on Edpuzzle, now that we know that a marten eats deer mouse, red squirrels, and salmon, what type of or what type of of consumer does that make the marten? Is it an herbivore or is it a carnivore? If you said the marten is a carnivore, that is correct. The marten is an example of a carnivore because it eats other animals for its energy and food. Now let's take a look at our other organisms. For example, this grizzly bear. I see that there are a couple of different arrows that are pointing to the grizzly bear. Let's see the food that the grizzly bear consumes or eats. One of the arrows pointing to from the to the grizzly bear is the skunk cabbage. 
That tells me that the grizzly bear eats skunk cabbage. Our next arrow is the stinging nettle. A grizzly bear can also eat a stinging nettle. So far, I see that the grizzly bear is only eating plants. Hmm, is it an herbivore? Let's continue looking at what else a grizzly bear eats to see what type of consumer it is. Our third arrow is pointing to a salmon. So a grizzly bear can also eat salmon for energy. So it's not just eating plants, it also eats meat. What kind of organism, what kind of consumer does that make the grizzly bear? It's eating plants like skunk cabbage, stinging nettle. It also eats grasses and hedges and also the red elderberry. But it also eats salmon. Is it a carnivore, an herbivore, or an omnivore? If you said omnivore, that is correct. The grizzly bear is... It's an example of an omnivore because this grizzly bear is eating plants and other animals for energy. So when we look at food webs, it's very important to pay close attention to the arrows to, so that we can know what organism is eating who. And also pay attention to what they eat so we know how to identify it. That is the end of our lesson for today. But before I go, I want to show you where you can find your test scores on Google Classroom. Let's head over to Google Classroom. This is an example of a Google Classroom. If this is the main page where I post all of our announcements, if you click on classwork, the first thing you will see is the weekly agenda, then our resources. You know, scroll down to test scores and you will see and you will see an assignment that says your name and test grade. So if you have completed your science unit six test, just click on that, open up the link, and you will see your test scores. I have some friends who have yet to complete their test, so your um, your test score is not updated. But once you complete it with me later this week, it will be posted on Google Classroom. Have a great Tuesday.